Let's teach you how to treat your neck with a massage cane. Legitimately, this is about to change your surfing life with a bit of theoretical understanding, a bit of anatomy, and some treatment protocols. Literally, you should be traveling across the world on your surf trips with one of these in your bag. If you're one of those, oh, my neck's bothering me in the surf, oh, I spent too much time at the computer trying to get the boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, whomever to rub the neck, let's change your life with a massage cane. First off, thanks for watching. I'm Chris Mills. I run surfstrengthcoach.com and we operate the Surf Athlete app. I have a really big background in anatomy, physiology, treatment, rehab, strength and conditioning. So we're gonna start giving you a bit of the details of how to efficiently and appropriately treat all this good stuff in the neck, the cervical spine. So what you are about to watch is a little bit of theory, a bit of anatomy, and how to treat the superficial musculature, predominantly upper trapezius and levator scapulae of the neck. So the videos you're about to watch are pulled from a mini program that is available to subscribers of the Surf Athlete app, or if you buy a massage cane from one of the links below in the description, you will get a QR code to access this mini course where we go through all of the anatomy that you should know, the theoretical understanding of how to treat efficiently, and then the superficial, the intermediate, and the deepest layers, because you as a surfer want to get into that intermediate and deep stuff. But with the basics of this superficial treatment, it's gonna be legit. So let's get into it. Let's start by giving you a bit of a theoretical understanding of treating tissue and how muscle tone and spasm is regulated and driven by the nervous system and brain. And then also give you a bit of anatomical awareness of, oh, this bone here is the spinous process of C2. That means the muscle above it is a suboccipital, or to the right is the channel between the transverse and spinous process. You will understand that shortly. But with a little bit of anatomical understanding, you just know where to treat and how to treat. So the first step of this process are the roughly three types of tissue treatment. First one being a slide and glide. It's all about that chill. Like I mentioned, tone, muscle spasm. Oh, it's tight here. That's all via the nervous system, the brain, increasing tone within particular muscle tissues. Let's say you just surf for a couple hours. Those muscles are fatigued. They probably have an increased tone via the brain or via the fatigue because you just used them to paddle for the last two and a half hours. So we can downgrade that tone. But since it's via the brain, we shouldn't just smash and bash tissue. We need to slide and glide and chill to let that brain downregulate tone. We'll get into more of this very shortly. But the slide and glide is simply getting to a bit of depth. And I will explain tissue depth in more detail shortly. But we get into a depth and then we just really casually slide and glide. I'm going about one centimeter a second. Pretty slow. You'll see most people do it like this. They ain't doing nothing. Nothing beneficial. Slide and glide. Get to a depth. Maintain that depth and chill. This slower process lets you become aware of pinpoint specific areas that may need ischemic compression, which you'll learn about in a moment, or trigger point therapy. But it's also, again, giving the brain time to relax, time to downgrade muscle tone. Slide and glide. This is generally the first part of treatment. So you can just start relaxing tissues getting aware of particular problematic or tender areas and prepare the tissue for deeper treatment options. Second type of treatment, ischemic compression. What does that mean? It just means put pressure there, maintain it. We're usually doing this on particularly tight sensitive spots or areas that we find a trigger point. A trigger point is a localized, really specific, really sensitive area, and it often refers pain to another part of the body. The suboccipital region, these 
muscles at the very base of the skull that attach to the top of the cervical spine, the neck, they can refer pain up and around the head and face and be very similar to migraines actually. So they can get really fatigued or overworked. They're often also weak. This computer posture tightens things up and weakens it. And then we surf and all these weak muscles are trying to work and they can't. So then they get into spasm and let's make them chill. Slide and glide, get into some ischemic compression. So let's say I've done some slide and glide and I'm like, oh, there's a sensitive spot. So that's on my about transverse process, I'll teach you that, of about C2, C3, the second and third cervical vertebrae. That actually gives me a little referral just up through here. Referral being, oh, it sends some pain up there, a little bit of an ache. I feel it elsewhere, but I'm pushing here. So I go into ischemic compression, meaning I apply some pressure and get that sensitivity to a four to six out of 10 scale. 10's brutal. We treat in four to six relaxed face, calm breathing. I'm not pushing so hard that I'm like, ah, that's not doing anything good. Chill, ischemic compression. I push anywhere from 10 to 90 seconds until I start to get a downgrade in sensitivity. Let's say it was a six out of 10. I hold this 30 seconds later, it drops off to a three. Cool, I can release pressure. That then allows blood flow to come into that area and perhaps flush out waste products if that tissue is hyper contracted for too prolonged period of time. So I might let that release for 10, 20 seconds and then I can kind of slowly come back into a slide and glide and get to that area and again treat that localized tissue with an ischemic compression for another 10 to 90 seconds until I start to get a downgrade. You can treat a particular area two to three times per session with ischemic compression. The more often you treat, you're going to become aware of areas that are often problematic for you. So I pretty much always have a really sensitive spot right about there. That's the obliquus capitis inferior, I believe. It's one of your suboccipital muscles. That's due to some cervical spine whiplash injuries I've had. That's usually a tender spot there and I can get a little referral out of that. So I would chill, compress, breathe, relax, maintain 10 to 90 seconds until that drops off. Once it drops off, relax, let it chill for a moment and then perhaps treat again. That's how you can do ischemic compression. The third generalized type of treatment is a pin and stretch. So think of layers. This is why we need to learn about depth. Let's say this is my neck, a bad example. But if you see here, these are the spinous processes of your neck. This is the back of the skull, okay? So this way the skull's facing forwards. These little bones on the side where the nerves comes out over here, the spinous process, sorry, the transverse processes. In the back, if you were to reach base of your skull and then come down, you feel a big bony bump. That is your C2, second cervical vertebrae spinous process. C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. You have seven cervical vertebrae. In between transverse process and spinous processes, we got this meat channel. That's where we're really treating but it's deep. There are layers of tissue going in different directions, crisscrossing, outer layers, deeper layers. Treatment of the superficial layers, we're really gonna go after upper trapezius, but we'll start treating some of those meat channel muscles as well. Know that the upper trapezius, it's all this bulk of muscle. It has attachments onto the shoulder blade, a bit of the collarbone, onto that acromion, the spine of the scapula. Just know that it's this big muscle and it's all of this, right? If you kind of surf and you're doing this a lot and extending the neck, the stuff gets tight. So ideally, it's shirtless. You don't really need oil for slide and glide. You'll just start base of the neck. This is really, better upright. Some of the other stuff we're gonna get down on the ground. This is just upright. 
and I just start doing a casual slide and glide. I'm gonna run into my shirt here, but I will bring this all the way out onto the collarbone. Now the key when holding this is not shrugging up, right? This bottom hand from the other side that I'm treating is doing the work. This hand is just a little bit of a guide and I'm keeping this tissue totally relaxed. It's not this. This one's doing the pulling. This one's kind of doing the steering. So I can start doing some slide and glide on the back of the neck. You're probably treating a little bit of upper trap, but once we start getting down here towards the base and then out onto this meat, now it's not excessively forward, right? If I shrug up, you feel all this bulk of muscle, that's upper trap. That's where people are always like, oh, rub here. If I pinch it, that's kind of sensitive. So I can slide and glide. There's a sensitive spot that actually refers up into my head. There's a lot of trigger points, known trigger points within this upper trapezius. I might do some ischemic compression here, hold for 10 to 90 seconds at a four to six pain scale. I can repeat that two or three times. You'll find some trigger points out here on the edge. I could move further back. You'll see the upper trap muscle is a very big muscle. We've also got some middle traps as well. I will teach you how to do these kind of interscapular muscles, but to start with, we're just treating this upper trap. Now, slide and glides, cool. I'm try keeping that neck relaxed. I'm not shrugging up. I'm pulling with this bottom arm. But what we really wanna to get to with this upper trap is starting to pin and stretch. Nice and chill. So again, I need to get a particular depth of tissue. If I start in just finding depth, there's tone. So that's why we always start with some general slide and glides, maybe some ischemic compression to reduce some muscle tone so that we can get a little more depth. So there's a little sensitivity. I'd maybe hold some pressure there, find a depth. And then I start to move my head away from that pressure. Now, if you really know your anatomy, you know that the upper trap extends, side bends, and contralaterally rotates. It's a lot to know. You don't need to know that. So just think, since it does those actions, I need to move away to stretch it. So just think I put pressure, move my head away, and find an angle that I get a little bit of stretch, and then I release it. And I get to another little bit of pinning pressure tissue, and I stretch. Again, it needs to be on skin, ideally, so the skin and tissue can slide and I just stretch away, and I find different angles. Ooh, that's a good one. All right, beneath that upper trap is levator scapula. So if I'm treating more in this region, I could be getting upper trap or levator scapula. If I'm out here, more on the lateral part of the posterior shoulder, that's gonna be more upper trap only. There's a little sensitivity. Ideally, I'm on skin and I just maintain the depth, maintain the pressure, and stretch away, and I find angles. Ooh, that gives me a little referral all the way up to here. So I might kind of hold that, breathe, relax, come out of it, make sure I've got that depth. Take your time with this, because half a centimeter makes a big difference, left or right, forward or back, half a centimeter, one centimeter. It can be a sensitive spot or a non-sensitive spot. So we just kind of take our time, chill, pin and stretch. We're working that upper trap. We've kind of done some casual slide and glides on the posterior neck. We've come out to this upper trap. We're doing some pin and stretching. Maybe we're more in this kind of levator scapula area where it attaches to the superior angle of the shoulder blade. And we pin and stretch away. So for basic effectiveness, just think, stretch away from the pressure and find an angle that elicits a little bit of a stretch. Breathe there for one in and out, relax it slowly, maybe change that angle of line of tension just a little, and then I stretch into a position, breathe, relax. I might spend three to five minutes per side and we're treating more of the superficial tissue. 
before we start getting, ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, slipped. If it slips, all good. So we're treating the superficial before we start getting into the deeper cervical spine or neck musculature. And again, just want to reiterate what you're about to watch. We've chopped and edited from the full course into this video, access the full process, all the techniques in the app or get a cane.